Hello everyone and welcome to our 13th Digimon Adventure novel reading episode where we are reading the translations by Onke of the Digimon Adventure novels which is a three book series which more or less retells the Digimon Adventure story. Now with this episode we're starting book two as we finished book one in the previous episode so this time we're going to be tackling book two and we'll be reading the prologue as well as the first part of chapter four which is the first chapter of book two. Prologue in a remote cabin. He could hear the faint creaking of the weather vane on the top roof. Heavy clouds covered the sky outside the window but the sunshine filtering through looked a lot stronger than he had expected. It looks like just the day where I first came to the world. He reminisced as he mended the seams of his worn cloth bag he'd used to carry the book during his long travels. After fleeing from his original world, it was half due to banishment that he arrived onto this one. The only things he had with him at the time were this book and his staff. Whoever owned or read from the forbidden book was punished in his world. Although he knew this, he couldn't hold back the urge to learn its secret knowledge. As a result, he was exiled to this world. The composition of his body was changed so that he now looked like a life-size doll. Wandering this world for what seemed like ages, and not consuming much as he didn't know what was edible or not, he managed to finally arrive at a village where he sank to the floor his energy spent. The villagers seemed afraid to address this unknown wanderer who had collapsed on the streets because none of them dared to get close. He should have died then. But a small shadow approached him and called out to him. And now, although he only used it in the short periods when he had leave, he had even been given his own personal cabin. The door opened and the bright light from outside fell upon him. A small shadow stood at the doorframe, silhouetted against the large setting sun. The golden ring at the end of her tail flashed in the sunset. "'Sorry to assign you again so immediately after your return,' the small white shadow said to him. "'But you have your next orders.' Anyone who didn't know her would find it hard to believe that this small creature, who only reached up to his waist, could destroy opponents even bigger than this cabin. He stood up. "'But, sir, I haven't finished searching for the crest yet. There are two more. The situation has changed.' Preparations for the invasion are to be made immediately, and is our job to assemble the troops. So we forget about the crests? This is more important, the small white shadow said, her voice tight. Your work pleases Lord Vandemon greatly, but these next orders require great haste. Let's go, Wizamon. Understood, Tailmon. When he answered the small shadow, Tailmon had already turned and run towards the castle. I will follow you anywhere. He, Wizamon, hid the book into the folds of his clothes and went after her. Until the moment that same light I'd seen in your eyes when you'd first saved me returns. Until the day you remember your true self. A fierce wind made his cape flutter madly behind him, as he eyed the sun sinking over the horizon. He could also see the dark clouds that never parted, eternally swirling over the thorny mountains protruding around Vamdemon's castle. Chapter 4 the Lake of Separation. Part 1. Temp Lake. The digital world had many things that made humans think, hey, I've seen that somewhere, when they looked. Maybe it was because the data from the real world had flowed into it when it was first created. But of course, the result was a very mismatched combination of objects. Take, for instance, the trees with electrical outlets in their trunks, or cork tops confined in the insides of a rock but the entire landscape surrounding this particular lake looked as though it had come directly out of a picture book of the Alps. The blue sky could be seen unobstructed around it for miles. The lake surface reflected the sky, making small waves that sparkled. The winds here were always gentle, never to be felt roaring violently or even going over five miles per hour. At the west of the lake was a mountain range with the mountain of an analogical reasoning spread majestically amidst. At the northern coast was a castle, 
whose style was an impossible blend of real castles built in Europe and Japan. Seeing such an unusual phenomenon only strengthened the impression that this was the digital world. The lake spread long and narrow towards both north and south, so although impossible to see from the castle, there was an amusement park at the southern coast, complete with a ferris wheel and roller coaster. Complementing the amusement park theme were a few swan-shaped pedal boats tied at the harbour of the lake shore. At the east coast was a restaurant made of white walls, with a forest spread picturesquely behind it. At the harbour in front of it, too, was tied a single swan-shaped pedal boat. Two shadows stood within the forest. It was Sora and her partner, Piermon. Sora stared at the back door of the restaurant where the kitchen was, as still a stone. The sound of crashing dishes could be heard from within the restaurant, immediately followed by an angry yelling voice. From outside, they couldn't hear what the voice was saying, but it clearly belonged to Yamato Ishida. The back door of the restaurant opened, and Gabumon came out holding a dustpan. Sora scrambled behind a tree and hid, followed closely by Piermon. Gabumon poured the broken dishes into the garbage dump. While the door lay open, they could hear the smaller sounds of another voice, apologising underneath the angry tirade. It belonged to Joe Kiddo. Sora took out a crest from within the pouch tied around her waist. The symbol carved in it was different from Taichi's crest, and it flickered weakly. It was now three months since both Taichi and the large evolved form of Ogumon, Metal Greymon, had disappeared. Soundlessly, Sora approached the warehouse and put the weakly glowing crest on the highest shelf before returning to the forest. Unless someone purposefully reached towards that shelf, no one would be able to come upon it up there. Hey Sora, why aren't you going back to the others? Piermon asked. Sora didn't answer. The forest blocked much of the sun, so her face was masked in shadow at just that moment. Piermon couldn't tell what sort of expression she had. So thanks for listening, and it's pretty interesting that we're learning about how Wizardmon actually originated from a different universe, which is actually another Bandai property, which is a V-Pet called Magical Witches, which is uh, really hard to get my hands on. I don't have one in my collection, but it's always been one of those ones that I've been wanting to snap up, but just never seems to be available. So uh, that's a nice bit of uh, extra lore that they gave, that Wizamon's not a Digimon, he's just been turned into a Digimon, he's actually a magical witch. So that's pretty cool, he's from a different, he's a planeswalker, that he's just drifted over from another Bandai property to do a little bit of a, I guess, product placement for a different uh, item that you can buy from Bandai, so thanks for that. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's pretty cool that we actually get that addressed. And uh, yeah, so that's that's interesting. So that was the first bit of the second book of the Digimon Adventure novel. And once again, thank you to Onkei for providing these translations, because I know that there's a couple of different bits that uh, it's that is would be considered an improvement on Adventure, like uh, actually stating the magical witch's tie-in. That's pretty cool, as well as having a Pokemon show up. And I do believe there's a couple more bits that are seen as overall quality of life improvements for the story. So it is good to compare this with the original adventure. And it's also exciting to read this alongside of the new adventure that's coming out at the moment, which I've already covered the first episode of of this podcast. And by the time this is released, I probably would have covered the first four or so episodes, depending on how I'm thinking about releasing these novel readings. But yeah, thanks for listening. So as always, the link dumps linked in the description. Our red bubble is also linked in the description. You can contact us and stay updated. Email us at lostintranslation.com at gmail.com or you can comment on this episode on our website. And the website is also somewhere where you can vote in polls, check our release schedule and our blog posts. And you can follow us on Translation on Twitter and you can find us on Lost in Translation on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. We have a discussion thread on With the Will and a red thread in Digimon subreddit. And we would appreciate if you would view us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and any other podcast app that you use. And you can also donate to our Patreon. And that's linked in the description as well. So you can start from as little as a dollar a month. And that gets you to our 
access to a listen discord server but there are higher levels more rewards such as notes early episodes and more and thank you to our current supporters on patreon joe anime guy who's anime guy Kurosaki from the number one on youtube stephen reeves wild 64 and archive of our own Kadawashi, Chisai, who you can follow on ch- Tumblr at Chisai236, Kyle, Tom, Lismet, who is a like mod on Tumblr, Nicholas, Sam, Spiral, Keith from a computer podcast on the internet, Magnus, and Hemi. And you can make a one donation on our PayPal, which we found in the description. It's paypal.me slash Ergemon. And we also have a coffee, which is ko-fi.com slash Erdra. And thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!